So a couple of years ago, I made a video for chess.com called Calculate Like a Grandmaster. And then a few years later, I made another video that was also quite popular titled Blunder Like a Grandmaster. And on these videos, there's always that one comment where someone says, oh, you should make a video that's called Resign Like a Grandmaster. Ha ha ha. And while that's obviously very funny, I was thinking about it and I realized there is actually some common techniques and methods that GMs use when resigning a game. So for this video, I wanted to break down some of the most common methods that GMs will use when they know the game is lost and it's time to resign. Now, one thing that you're not going to see grandmasters do is tip their king over like this. This is for kids. It's sloppy, it's bad form. You're just gonna have to pick the king back up anyway to reset the pieces. There's really no point to it. Instead, what I'd like to introduce you guys to is what I would call the classic technique, where in some combination you need to pause the clock, shake your opponent's hand, usually making eye contact, perhaps giving them some kind of nod of approval or respect, or somehow just convey that you're admitting defeat. There's no need to say good game or I resign. The position should kind of say that for you as well as your expression. And then the most important part, placing the kings on the right squares in the center. If you're playing on a DGT board, this is to indicate the final result. Now some players will mix it up a little bit and actually stick out their hand first and only then stop the clock. This is also considered acceptable. Now when it comes to the kings, it's surprising how many players will actually mess this part up despite its very simple nature. If white wins the game, you put the kings on light squares. If black wins the game, you put the kings on the dark squares in the center. And if the game was a draw, you would put the kings on opposite color squares. Doesn't matter whether you put the kings on e4, e5, or d4, d5. Now, if there was a piece on one of these central squares that you need to use, then a little bit of grandmaster technique is needed. Let's say there's a piece on one of the squares that we're going to use. So white lost the game, there's a rook on e5 in the final position, what to do now? Well, as white, I would put my king on the d4 square and black would take their king and actually capture their own rook, immediately placing the king on the right color square and then they can take the rook and put it on h8 or a8 and the players can start setting up the pieces. Now, the next method that I like to mention is a little bit less common, but does get used quite frequently. And this is what I would call the stand-up technique. Now, like the name suggests, this means that you resign while actually standing up and getting away from the board. Now, why would someone do this, you might ask? Well, if you're really frustrated at losing the game and you just want to get out of there as quickly as possible, a lot of players don't want to stick around and maybe have their opponent talk to them about their game or something lame like that. And instead, they just want to get out of there as quickly as they can. So in order to pull this off, you basically have to stick out your hand because the handshake is still very important and necessary. You don't want to disrespect your opponent. But while you're sticking out your hand, you need to actually get up, lift yourself out of your chair and start turning away. It's very important that no eye contact is made. You need to let your opponent know just how disappointed you are about losing the game. So a lot of players will do this with a little bit of a head shake or they might throw their hands up in disgust. You can kind of play around with it and see what works for you. Now, I'm not a grandmaster. I don't have perfect resignation technique, but I can kind of give it my best shot and show you what it would look like in real time. So here I'm playing white. I'm about to get checkmated. The game is over. It's time to resign. I'm totally disgusted. So stand up, hand comes out. And as you can see, I try to get away from the board as quickly as I can. Now, like I mentioned, the stand-up technique has been used by some of the world's best players. I believe the method was originally invented by Hikaru Nakamura, who uses it frequently whenever he loses a blitz game. But we've also seen players like Magnus Carlsen, among others, utilize this technique after losing a frustrating game. So now let's take a look at some real live footage and break down some of the world's best players resigning in action. So we're coming in at the end here in the game between Carlson and Artemiev. 
Here Artemyev is about to resign as he is losing both on the clock and on the board, but watch his technique as it's truly flawless. There's the stopping of the clock, there's the handshake, and immediately he puts his king on the right color square. Now that all happened pretty fast, so let's rewind the tape and watch at half speed. Here Magnus hesitates, plays d7, pushing the pawn, now threatening rook e8 check. Artemyev quickly gives a desperate check on d1, but after white blocks, he will also be threatening queen takes f7, followed by mate. Magnus eventually blocks with the bishop here, and now with his seconds ticking down, Artemyev waits until he has exactly one second, not seeing a move, stops the clock right before flagging, immediately sticks out his hand, makes eye contact, nice nod there, and immediately grabs his king and confidently puts it on the right square. And that is truly fantastic Soviet school resignation technique. In our next example here, we have Hikaru Nakamura playing against Ali Reza Feruja, and here Naka is about to go down in this endgame. He realizes he's in trouble, starts the head shaking, tries to play bishop g7, black keeps pushing the pawn, and it turns out the rook is not going to be in time. Bishop covers a promotion square, and there we have it. Standing up, hand comes out, Ali Reza quickly grabs the hand, and immediately signs the score sheet. Now again, that all happened very, very quickly, so let's rewind the tape and take a look at this in slow motion. So here, Naka is trying to hold on. He plays b3, attacking black's bishop on c4. Ali Reza, calculating like a machine, sees that the f-pawn is actually unstoppable, ignores the attack, starts pushing the pawn. Naka realizes he's messed up, looks for any last chance he can find to stop this pawn from promoting, tries to put the bishop on g7, close enough. Black keeps calculating, pushes f2 here, white gives rook a a check, probably expecting king f7, rook f8, he can pick up the pawn, but instead we see king d7, now he realizes rook f8 is too slow, the bishop controls the promotion square, shock and disbelief, stands up, stick, barely sticks out his hand there, but enough for Ali Reza to grab it and claim the victory. So really, really high level stand-up technique here by none other than the inventor of the method, Hikaru Nakamura. Now, of course, Hikaru is a consummate professional. He knows he can't leave the game without signing the results sheet. So he comes back, signs the score sheet and immediately gets out of there. So I hope you guys found this video instructive. You may not be able to play like a grandmaster right now, but you can at least start behaving like one and learning to resign with the utmost technique is something that I think is really important for all chess players. With that, I'll be signing off until next time.